Movies truly are strange things. Some of them are so awesome that you feel privileged just to have experienced them, while others are so overwhelmingly shit that they leave an indelible skid mark on your psyche for the rest of your life. But good or bad, they're all memorable in their own way. Then there's the ones that are so thoroughly bland and mediocre that five minutes after the credits roll, you genuinely struggle to remember what the fuck you just watched. Which brings me neatly along to Tomb Raider, the second failed attempt to bring one of the most iconic video game characters in history to the silver screen. The Angelina Jolie movies were a fun and light-hearted take on the franchise that got scuppered by a terrible second entry, but the reboot promised us a high-octane action-adventure with a more grounded, realistic life that could kick ass and be more than just a sexual fantasy for sweaty, disgusting teenagers. Such was their delusion. Unfortunately, what we actually got was a dull, derivative, uninspired action flick heavily based around the dull, derivative Tomb Raider reboot trilogy, featuring a forgettable protagonist that feels like a background character in her own film. Tomb Raider is the kind of movie that functions best when playing in the background, while you do something far more interesting, like drinking toilet duck. Ah, no. Not toilet duck again. Anyway, break out your pistols and padded bras, and let Dr. Drinker take a look. So the movie kicks off with a little voiceover from Lara's dad, who's searching for the lost tomb of an evil Japanese sorcerer lady that could apparently kill people just by touching them. Well, that definitely sounds like the kind of thing you'd want to dig up. Anyway, he fucks off to find it and leaves young Lara behind to fend for herself. What's a great father? Flash forward 10 years and Lara's now eking out a living as a bike courier, in between getting her ass kicked by cage fighters and having trite flashbacks to her childhood. Wait, isn't Lara Croft supposed to be super rich or something? Nah, this is the new and, uh, improved Lara that rejected her privileged upbringing so she can waste her life scraping by in minimum wage jobs. Because I guess that's supposed to make her more relatable or something. In reality, it just makes her incredibly stupid. The Lara Croft from the games wasn't cool because she pretended to be poor and working class in a desperate effort to seem relatable. She was cool because she was unapologetic about who and what she was. Her wealth and resources gave her the ability to travel the world and embark on incredible adventures. She didn't need to do it, and she wasn't forced into it. She chose to because it was fun and she had a thirst for exploration, adventure and discovery. In short, she was a woman who chose a life of danger and excitement over safety and security. And well, that's just fucking awesome. But this version of Lara is all hung up on her daddy. She's convinced that he's still alive, so she refuses to sign his death certificate out of some childish belief that a legal document somehow makes the thing real. But do you know what would be even more useful to you? Massive amounts of financial resources that you could use to travel to the furthest corners of the world, fund research into his movements, hire teams of private investigators, or secure the cooperation of local police and intelligence agencies. You could actually use your father's wealth to find your father. But nah, those Uber Eats aren't gonna deliver themselves. Anyway, one day Lara takes part in a dangerous game of cat and mouse, where she earns prize money by outrunning a bunch of people chasing her on bikes. And I don't mean Harley Davidson's here, I'm talking push bikes. Anyway, it's all going great until she has another flashback of her dad, which causes her to crash into a police car and get arrested. I mean, she just went right over the hood of a car at high speed. Shouldn't she be in a hospital or something? Also, what crime did she actually commit here? Is it illegal to get run over now? Anyway, the script needs the rest of the plot to happen, so off to jail she goes, so she can get bailed out by Shady Businesswoman. Shady Businesswoman used to work for Lara's dad, and explains that if she doesn't sign his death certificate and claim her inheritance, all his assets are gonna get sold off. Oh no, what a conundrum. Do I accept this massive country mansion, the family fortune, and live out the rest of my life in obscene luxury, or turn it down so I can carry on playing bike tag in London with a bunch of adult children? Come Coming from a filthy rich family is just such a drag, isn't it, Lara? But eventually, Lara has an attack of common sense and signs the paper. But what's this? A puzzle box? A cryptic message? A mysterious key? I say, old boy, I smell adventure in the air. Oh wait, that's just those corpses underneath my floorboards. So Lara goes to her family home and does some generic puzzle solving, which leads her into a hidden lab beneath the family vault, where she finds a message from her dad on an old video camera. 
And damn, the batteries on this thing must be harder than a quadratic equation because it still functions perfectly after sitting there for 10 years. Look, I know stuff like this is done for the sake of movie convenience, but honestly, it still pisses me off when technology is shown to magically function years or even decades after it should have failed. Anyway, whatever. So her dad tells her to destroy all the research there, especially the files on evil Japanese sorcerer lady, because it would be just terrible if that fell into the wrong hands. So why didn't you just fucking destroy it yourself then? I mean, if you were going on a dangerous mission with little chance of survival, and you didn't want your daughter to suffer the same fate, why would you give her literally everything she needs to track you down? But those considerations don't matter, because the script needs the rest of the plot to happen. So naturally, Lara ignores his instructions and travels to Hong Kong to pick up his trail. After chartering a ship that's somehow able to be operated by a single man, she heads to the island where evil Japanese sorcerer lady got buried. But oh no, the ship sinks in a storm and Lara ends up getting captured by another group that got there first. They're also looking for the tomb because they want to turn evil Japanese sorcerer lady into a weapon of some kind. Because I guess ancient mythical historical figures are more effective on the battlefield than smart bombs, guns, and all of the combined chemical and biological weapons that modern science has already produced in massive quantities. The problem is that these guys have had no luck so far, mainly because their strategy for finding the tomb consists of randomly digging up the whole island and just hoping for the best. So after monologuing for a while, forgettable male villain conscripts Lara and her mate into his workforce, instead of, you know, just killing them. I mean, you know they're going to escape and- Hey! Go! Ah, oh, never mind. I love how Lara's friend basically does all the work and sacrifices his chance of escape so that she can get away. Damn, this dude's more interesting and likeable than the actual star of the movie. Anyway, Lara escapes into the jungle and look who happens to show up. Oh my god, I'm so shocked that her father who disappeared in mysterious circumstances and constantly gets referenced throughout the script happens to show up just in time for the finale. Who could have predicted this? So Lara's dad explains that he's been here for the past 10 years and he wants to stop the evil mercenary guys from finding the tomb, ignoring the fact that none of this would even be happening if he just destroyed his research before coming here. Oh Richard, you silly, silly man. Lara, on the other hand, wants to free all the prisoners being used as slave labour. So they part ways, but naturally Lara's dad fucks it up and gets himself captured, so Lara surrenders and they all end up going into the tomb anyway. This is just like Raiders of the Lost Ark, only not good. So they avoid some totally impractical traps that could never actually exist in real life and make their way to evil Japanese sorcerer lady. And this asshole opens up her coffin without any safety precautions and immediately turns into a fucking zombie. Really? You never thought to bring any kind of protective gear with you? Considering the whole purpose of this mission was to secure a biological weapon? That's when Lara realises that evil Japanese sorcerer lady wasn't actually evil at all, but was infected with some kind of zombie virus. I guess the patriarch Archie must have done it to her, and had herself sealed in here to prevent the virus from spreading. WHAT THE FUCK?! So this lady realised she'd become a carrier for some kind of super deadly virus that turns people into zombies in a matter of seconds. Uh, okay. Where exactly did this virus come from? Don't know. And she decided to isolate herself away to stop anyone else from catching it. I mean, it kinda makes sense, I guess, assuming that nobody else in the world has got it. Then I guess she just sat back and waited 20 years or so while armies of labourers constructed this huge elaborate tomb complex, complete with booby traps and ornamental decoration and probably a fucking hot tub and karaoke bar. I mean, what the fuck was she even doing all this time? How many tens of thousands of people must have died in the time it took to set this up. And wouldn't everyone involved in the construction know exactly where her body was buried and what was going on? And why seal your body and the virus away in a giant coffin where it's just going to get preserved and discovered by future generations? <laughs> Why not just kill yourself immediately and instruct your servants to cremate your body? That way you would have solved the entire problem in a single day. Stupid Japanese sorcerer lady. Anyway, forgettable male villain snaps a finger from the corpse and makes a run for it. But Lara catches up to him, beats the shit out of him and punches the finger right into his fucking mouth. Then he turns into a zombie and she kicks him off a cliff and he dies. Oh yeah, and her dad blows himself up to destroy the tomb. 
Then Lara goes home and buys a pair of pistols, because that's a thing you can totally do in London. And I guess we're meant to be like, oh shit, she's becoming the real Lara Croft now. But really, all I was thinking was, what the fuck did I just watch? Anyway, that's the plot for a generic action movie with Tomb Raider in the title. Now, I have to admit, my hopes weren't exactly high going into this film. The fact that it was directed by a Norwegian that nobody's ever heard of, with such classic movies to his name as A Fistful of Kebab and Magic Silver, or that the screenplay was written by the woman who produced the, uh, story for Captain Marvel, or that the biggest actor in the cast was only in the movie for about 15 minutes, pretty much told me everything I needed to know. And well, I wasn't exactly disappointed. In terms of world building, action sequences, visual style and overall storyline, the movie borrows heavily from the rebooted Tomb Raider trilogy, which I guess was inevitable since the game developers want to push their newest product. The problem is that those games were basically cheap imitations of the Uncharted series, so what you're left with here is a copy of a copy. And well, the results speak for themselves. Tomb Raider comes across as a generic action-adventure hybrid, cynically stitching together elements from better games and movies, and adding very little unique personality of its own. I mean, it's competently shot, and most of the action scenes are reasonably well done, but there's nothing smart or groundbreaking here. Jesus, we don't even get any fucking Tomb Raiding until like the last 15 minutes. I'll at least give the script credit for not making the main character into another Rey or Captain Marvel, which is kind of ironic given who wrote it. This Lara is a much more vulnerable and human version of the character. She can overextend herself and get beaten down as a result. She can make mistakes and get caught off guard, and she can even get injured and frightened. She actually goes on a bit of a journey in the course of the story, becoming stronger and more competent by tackling adversity, and ultimately learning to let go of the past and find new purpose with her life. I mean, it's not exactly Shakespeare, but it's better than most movies of its ilk nowadays. The problem, I think, is that they went a little too far in the opposite direction, taking away her agency and making her weirdly passive and boring for most of the movie. Lara somehow manages to feel like a background character in her own story, either following clues left by her father, getting captured and having to be rescued by her friend Lou Ren, or being coerced into helping forgettable male villain. She always seems to be under the shadow of someone bigger, and for a movie that tried to market itself on its strong, empowered female character, well, she certainly spends a lot of time being influenced by the men in her life. Lara just seems to be along for the ride on this one, bouncing from place to place until the next character or plot event comes along to tell her what to do next. And the more time I spent with her, the more I realised that I didn't particularly care what happened to her. She's just not very interesting. The situation isn't helped by the actress playing her. Now don't get me wrong, Alicia Vikander seems like a nice person, and she clearly put in the work to get in shape for the role. She's stronger, tougher, and looks more physically capable than Angelina Jolie ever did. But it feels like there's just something missing here, and I'm not talking about the obvious. If you want to play a larger-than-life character like Lara Croft, you need serious charisma and magnetism to make the role your own, and Vikander just doesn't have it. Her portrayal here feels like she could be playing any generic female action hero, and honestly, I think that was my main takeaway from the movie as a whole. Tomb Raider probably would have done better as a standalone action-adventure flick with a female lead, and none of the baggage and expectations that come with the video game series. By trying to stay grounded and realistic, and spreading the narrative focus over a larger cast of characters, it pushes away the very elements that once made the games so compelling. And the end result is a movie that nobody particularly remembers or cares about. Which makes it doubly surprising that they're going to make a fucking sequel. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. Go away now.